guest is a team leader and chief antagonist on the excellent Have I Got News For You. He is a satirist, a comedian, a writer, and editor of Private Eye. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Hislop. <laughs> Now, let's talk about this extraordinary program. I'm devoted to Have I Got News For You. I mean, I just think it's a, it's a wonderful idea for more reasons than one. I mean, it fills a, it's an entertainment program. It also fills a gap, doesn't it, that's necessary. I think it's current affairs now for the BBC. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the whole remit. <laughs> it's like every program you like that. Panorama, like this. Yeah, I think we're taking over the lot. <laughs> but uh, what do you see its main function as being? It is entertaining, but, but does it have a, a serious purpose apart from that? Well, I mean, it is a quiz show. Yes. Um, uh, I, I can't pretend it is a great deal more than that. Um, but we do manage to do a bit of current affairs and a bit of satire now and then. And then apart from that, it's a sitcom in which three bad-tempered men um, are forced into a studio together um, for an hour and see what happens. The casting is wonderful and crucial, of course, because you've got Angus in the middle. To, it appears nobody likes Angus. Oh, no. You don't. Oh, no, no, you don't. Oh, no, yes. No, no, his mother does. His mother does. <laughs> And then, 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 then there's you, and then there's, there's Paul, Paul yeah. Morton. And there's, there's a conflict there, isn't there? Well, like most English comedies, it's about class, really. It is. <laughs> um, Paul Merton thinks that I'm a sort of stuffed shirt twit. <laughs> and I always think he was quite lucky to get GCSE metalwork. <laughs> <laughs> And does this, does this carry on after the show? I mean, do, do, are you close, really, or are, are you not? Oh, yes, we're like, we're like that. <laughs> <laughs> he does an act about you, doesn't he? He does a, a take-off on you. I once went to see his touring show. Um, he was in Tunbridge Wells, and he didn't know, and I went and snuck in the back. And in the middle of the show, he does an impression of someone, a sort of twit wandering along in a mortarboard, <laughs> taking tea with people. And then I suddenly realised it was me. <laughs> And I sort of stood up in the theatre saying, this isn't funny, <laughs> it's not clever. <laughs> so that's his view. He, he thinks every time he, he wins, have I got news for you, it's a blow for the working classes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the, the allegation that could be made from some people? Yep. Uh, about anonymous people. Anonymous people. No, I, I, well, I'll, I'll, make an, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make an observation. Right. Um, I, I, do you, the, the show that you did with uh, the famous show with uh, Paula Yates. Yeah. I just thought it was a kind of classic case of a sledgehammer to a nut, you know. That, that I mean, there's nothing wrong with Paul. I mean, she was all right, a bit, bit silly or something like that. But, you know, she wasn't a, a nasty person. She's no, not... it was... Um, she came on the week she'd just written a book, um, one of her many books. And this one um, was about um, how she'd had an operation to enhance her cleavage. Um, and she'd sold it to the Sun, serial rights, for about 30 grand that week. Yeah. And well, she came on and started talking about invasion of her privacy. And... <laughs> I thought that was hypocritical, oh, yes. so I said so. Yes. But at that time, she wasn't a sad case, she wasn't about to die, she was a fairly feisty journalist who I thought could take it. Do, do you ever actually lie awake at night thinking, oh my God, I wish I'd not said that about someone? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it, what kind of, what, what guides you? What is it that makes you angry most of all? What is it? I think it's an old-fashioned word. It's humbug, really. Um, bar humbug. Bar humbug. It's just people <laughs> talking complete nonsense when you know they mean the opposite. Um, and uh, I think that, that gets me going. I mean, in England, it's always been vice, folly and humbug. That's what you have a go at. And I only have to wake up and turn on the Today programme and hear the First Minister coming on, and I think, ha-ha, that's what I'm going to do today. So it gets you going at that time in the morning, then you read the newspapers and that gives yeah, you... Yeah, that, that gets you really annoyed. Another boost. <laughs> so by the time you get to your office, you're really yeah, at, war, at war with the world, are you? Yeah, That's absolutely. That's a wonderful thought, <laughs> isn't it? Mr. Angry oh. storms into his office, yes. Yeah. It's just public life is so irritating. It is, actually. Yes, the day-to-day -day business of getting it around is. Is, is irritating. And it's made them more... And I commute, so I'm in a bad temper every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's made... Connex. It's Connex. Would you like to rant about Connex? I'd just like to say Connex. That's all you're right. That's all I'm going to say. Now, go, going, moving on to, to Private Eye, which yeah. is the, the, the other part and, and significant part of, of, of your life. Um, do, does that have a purpose beyond being scurrilous and entertaining? Um, well, it's a pretty good purpose. It is. Um, yes, I think it's, it's there for, um, uh, in the hope of keeping public life honest. And if it's there to do anything, it's 
doing in a comic way, pointing out where um, uh, there are inadequacies either in the behavior or in the um, structure of our, our blessed leadership. But does it, uh, I mean, w w is there a vacuum in, 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 in the media that Pravidai that, fills? Well, at the moment, there's a, there's a vacuum in public life. There isn't an opposition. There is Tony. Um, there are Tony's friends, that's three of them, <laughs> and that's the government. The Labour Party doesn't oppose. The Conservative Party, I, does anyone remember them? <laughs> um, they used to be around. There is, there is no effective opposition. Most of the newspapers are bought off um, or have taken the, the Labour line. So there's no one to say no. And in the end, the press, um, the bit of it that I'm involved with, is one of the few bits left. So when Blair first came in, if, if you told a Blair joke to an audience, they'd just go, oh, please don't. You know, Tony's marvellous. Now, five years in, they start laughing. <laughs> yes. You see? <laughs> yes, they don't think he's marvellous anymore. And yes. it's, it's worth pointing that out. Yes. Because he doesn't know. He doesn't. <laughs> not, not even now? No. no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, so what allows this, this, this to happen, though? I mean, have, has the nature of politics changed? Is it more presidential now? Much it, more. So that's yes. the... Well, the... the, the um, and Blair has basically declared war recently. I don't know if you noticed. He didn't go to the Commons. He didn't ask their opinion, because why should he? They, we only voted for them. Um, and uh, there is no check and no balance. And I think that's what has to come back. Now, when you were, when you were a, a child, Greg, were you angry then? I mean, did you want to change the world? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I enjoyed laughing a lot. Um, my parents were expats. We lived in Kuwait and Jeddah and Nigeria and then Hong Kong. So there wasn't a lot of great local telly uh, <laughs> there. So we, um, my parents had a lot of records, and I used to listen to old Beyond the Fringe records um, and sit there in the sunshine laughing at Peter Cook somewhere in Soho and thinking maybe one day I'd like to do that. Oh, really? Um, that... So that was my inspiration, really. And, and, but you, but you went, to, went to university. You didn't read comedy. You can't do that. You read something entirely different. What I did was read English, you read English and yeah. read everybody who's ever been funny. In English. Yes. Um, so I read Oscar Wilde and Sheridan and Congreve and everybody who's written stuff that's funny. I got paid by the state to do this. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, going back before that, uh, uh, at, at public school, the, the, the school that the, your, your mate Merton so disapproves of. Yes. Um, did you. Uh, did, did we had fagging. Yeah. yeah. Marvellous. Marvellous. <laughs> Never did me any harm. <laughs> no, I, I think it would have Nothing wrong with it at all. <laughs> you see? <laughs> I think it would have knocked you into shape. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you brought that after the show. <laughs> but um, going back to, to, to public school, I mean, it yep. seems to me that, that I don't know, I didn't go to public school. I was like Paul Merton. I went to grammar school and thought all public school boys were twits. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, um, I mean, don't you feel abandoned when you go to public school? Don't you feel that your parents have kind of cast you off? Isn't there that feeling? Well, no, there wasn't. I mean, I, by the time I was um, 12, uh, my father died and... Yeah. School became, for me, a sort of refuge, um, and it became another family. And, and boarding schools are terrifically good at close friendships. And I still have a lot of the friends who I was at school with then. I actually work with Nick Newman, who I was at Harding Lie with, you know, um, 20 years ago. So, it, for me, it became a sort of terrific um, sucker and support. Were you, were you told of your father's death while at school? I was. I had that classic sort of bad drama scene. Really? Um, in which uh, the headmaster comes into a lesson and says, uh, Hislop, could, uh, could I have a word with you? Your mother's here. And then you sort of walk out, and yeah, it was awful. I mean, I sort of knew what was happening. What about, what about your, your, your mum? Did she sort of throw all her weight into, into having an ambition for you? Is, was that what, what happened? Well, my, and my mother, I, I really try. I mean, I hope I will be able to be as liberal as she was as a parent. I mean, I, I chose some A-levels, and then I changed all of them. And I said, Mum, I've changed all my A She said, terrific, great idea, that's really good. <laughs> then I applied to Oxford to read um, politics and philosophy. And then the summer before, I said, no, I don't want to do that, I'm changing to English. She said, terrific, great idea. <laughs> then I left university without a job at all. And I said, Mum, I'm uh, leaving without a job. She said, great idea, that's a very good idea, you do that. <laughs> so she I, was I fantastically do... encouraging. Yes. Um, and she let me sort of spend some time trying to work out if anyone would pay me for what I do now. <laughs> <laughs>